This is part 23 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss passing data to a view from a controller in ASP.NET Core MVC. There are three ways to do this. We can either use view data, view bag or a strongly typed view. In this video, we'll discuss using view data. When we use either view data or view bag to pass data from a controller to a view, we create something called loosely typed view. We'll discuss what loosely typed view means in just a bit. Now, here is what we want to do. Pass this employee model object from home controller to this details view. For that, we're going to make use of view data. What is view data? It's a dictionary of weakly typed objects. We use string keys to store and retrieve data from view data. Now, I'm going to use the key employee to store this employee model object in view data. You can give this key any meaningful name you want. In addition to employee model data, let's also pass a value for page title. And the key that I'm going to use for that is page title. Again, you can name this anything you want. And let's set the value to employee details. Now, we want to access this data that we have stored in the view data object from our details view. For that, we're going to use these same keys, employee and page title. The first thing that we're going to do here is change this h1 element to h3. And using this h3 element, we want to display page title. This is a razor view. In a razor view, we can write both HTML and C sharp code. To tell razor view that we're going to write a C sharp expression here, we use this symbol at. This is an indication to razor that we are switching from HTML to writing C sharp code. We want to retrieve page title from view data. And remember, the key that we have used is page title. Using this razor expression, we are retrieving page title value from view data dictionary and displaying it using the h3 element. Using the razor syntax, we can also write a block of C-sharp code. To write a block of C-sharp code, we use the add symbol and then a pair of curly braces. Now, let's also retrieve the employee object that we have stored in view data dictionary. For that, I'm going to create a variable. Let's name it employee. And remember, the key that we have used to store the employee object in view data is employee. So let's use the same key. One very important point to keep in mind is when accessing data of type string from this view data dictionary, we don't have to explicitly cast it to string type. Against this page title key, we stored a string value. So when accessing it from view data dictionary, we don't have to explicitly cast it to string type. That's automatically done for us. But if we are accessing any other type of data, other than string, then we have to explicitly cast it to the type that we are expecting. For that, let's use as keyword and the data that we are storing against this key employee is of type employee. So we know employee type is in employee management dot models namespace. Now we can use this variable employee to access the employee object properties like name, email, department, etc. In this first development, let's display the text name and against that, we want to display the name property value of the employee object. So now we want to switch from HTML to C sharp mode. So we use the at symbol and then we can access the variable employee and we know the employee object has got name property. Similarly, let's also display email property value. Finally, department. All right, with all these changes, let's run our project. Change the URL to point to slash home slash details. Notice we see page title and employee details as expected. Now let's understand the drawbacks of using view data. By using view data here, we are making this details view a loosely typed view. By loosely typed view, I mean the view doesn't know the type of data that we are storing against these random keys, page title, and employee at compile time. The view will know the type of data that we have stored in these keys only at runtime when these keys are resolved. Also, 
we do not have IntelliSense with these string keys. Since we don't have IntelliSense, we could easily misspell the keys and make typographical errors. Notice at the moment we have misspelled the key employee and when I build the solution, the build succeeded. This means we'll not come to know about these typographical errors at compile time. We'll only come to know about them at runtime. Notice when we reload this page, because of the typographical error we made, the page crashes. So the important point to keep in mind is view data is dynamically resolved at runtime. So it does not provide compile time type checking and as a result we do not get IntelliSense. Since we do not have IntelliSense, the speed at which we write code is reduced and the chances of misspelling and making typographical errors are also high. We'll only come to know about these errors at runtime. For this reason, we usually do not use view data. In our next video, we'll discuss how to use view bag and pass data from a controller to a view. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching.